Prayer has been, is, and will always be an important facet in our daily lives. We pray for rain. We pray for speedy recovery. We pray for good test grades. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. We pray for so many things. Good things, bad things, stumbling stones, everything. Everything we give to in prayer. We are constantly and should be constantly in a state of prayer. A state of communication with our Father. Prayer can be compared to something like using a cell phone. A signal from this device here, I take and come out, and this device right now is communicating with a cell tower. All the time, nice and silent, but it does it all the time. A signal goes out to the closest cell tower from here. Right now, as we're talking, it's constantly checking in, just to see where it is in relation to the communication source, that cell tower that's out there somewhere. The further away that you are from that tower, the signal strength starts getting weaker and weaker and weaker. You can ask anyone from Camp Agape, Amanda, am I right? Who is desperately trying to get a few bars on their phone and the contorted measures that they will take, trying to ensure that their device will communicate. I remember when I was counseling up at the, uh, with the Wranglers, and everybody wanted to sit on a certain couch in that building, at the Wrangler uh, uh, place, because that's where the uh, bars were, that's where the strongest signal in that house was. We should be like that in our prayer life today. We should constantly check in with our Creator, constantly making sure that we have enough strength to carry out today's activities. We should be going to extreme measures to make sure that we maintain a communication link between ourselves and our Savior. Jesus was like that in his prayer life, constantly seeking his Father's ear, constantly checking in to make sure that he's on the right path and not going down the wrong road. Today's text highlights three key prayers that our Lord and Savior stated in the Gospel of John. This chapter is unique in that it is the only chapter that is devoted to three prayers that Jesus offers to God. One, he prays to himself and prays for himself. He prays for his disciples. And third and final, he prays for future believers. The entire 17th chapter of the Gospel of John is Jesus' prayer. These prayers have been studied, they've been analyzed, and used as prayers for over 20 centuries. Well, Jesus begins this prayer journey with prayers for himself. He talks to his dad. He talks to God. Like we would talk to our our own father, our own dad. We want to tell those that we love about our work and how it's finished. Jesus is telling his dad that his work he did in God's name and that the glory is done, it's complete. Yet he's expressing something in that statement. What does Jesus really want? He wants what Dorothy wants from the Wizard of Oz. He wants what that soldier who's stationed over in Afghanistan wants so badly. He wants to come home. He wants to come home and see his dad. He wants this as written in verse 5. Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. Did you catch it? That's a fancy way of saying there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Christ 
like Dorothy and that soldier, desire only to come home. For Jesus, home is where his father is. Home is where his father's right hand is. And home is in the presence of God. Before Jesus even came to earth, he was one with God. At this point in ministry, when his mission on earth was almost finished, Jesus was asking his father to restore him to his original place of honor and authority. Don't we all desire to be home? To be at home with your loved ones? The ones that you care for? And they for you? Ultimately, we will all go home. We will all have the time to worship, glorify, and praise God forever and ever. Till then, we pray. We pray. We talk to God about going home and giving comfort here while we worship him on earth and wait for that glory day upon his return when the shepherd calls his sheep home. In his second part of the prayer chapter, Jesus prays for his disciples, his students, these followers who have been faithful throughout the journey but they, like Christ, need strength for the journey. As he travels, and the travels that were coming to closure, he knew that his friends, his students, had a long, hard road to go. He prays to the Father in verse 10, Glory has come to me through them. God's glory, in his revelation of character and presence, the lives of Jesus' disciples reveal his character, and he is present to the world through them. This also becomes a, a measuring stick in the journey with Christ. Can Christ pray that same prayer to each of us? Does your life reveal Jesus' character and his presence? A follower of Christ. A follower. If you are a follower of Christ you become sanctified. That's a big churchy word for being used for sacred use or being cleansed or being made holy through believing and obeying the word of God. If we have all confessed our sins and accepted the forgiveness through his death on the cross, that is fantastic. That is what we're supposed to be doing. But it cannot, it cannot stop there. It is our daily application of God's word that has a purifying effect on the minds and hearts. In today's society, it's pretty much standard that a, a daily bath is called to order, right? I, I take one every day. I, I like it. This week, my computer company that I work for, Kinetic, had moved to a, a better location down on Lake Street. Friday, I I put on my shorts, put on my little bandana that I had across my head, a little American bandana that I have, and went to work. Unfortunately, the air conditioning over at the new building had not been turned on. And so, sweat upon sweat upon sweat. And of course, and I think that Jay and a few of the guys can understand that we had to get in the ceiling to lay wire. And when you're having to lay wire there, you're getting into what? fiberglass and lots of it and so you're sweating and you're itching and you're itching and you're sweating and the first thing I did after that long hard day was go home and take a shower and soap up and wash all that sweat all those fiberglass particles all of that day away and boy did it feel good scripture is the soap for your soul we must use it and read it daily. Just like we soap to clean our bodies of filth and grime. Just like the shampoo bottle instructions say. What does it say? Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. That's right. Our scripture passages should be the same way. We ought to read and repeat. And continue doing it again and again and again. 
How many people have I talked to have read the same chapter, the same verses over and over and get something unique out of it each and every time? That's what scripture does. That is the power of the word of God. Read and repeat. Verse 19, for I sanctify myself that they too may truly be sanctified. Third, Jesus prays for believers. As I stated before, John 17 in the prayer chapter, we learned that he prayed for himself, for his followers, and now for future believers. Verse 20, I pray also for those who will, who will believe in me. He prayed for unity, for protection from the evil one, and to sanctify, what is that word? Sanctify, make clean. It's not a clique, not a sect of believers. This was the whole world that was being offered the redemptive grace that only Christ can give. Emmanuel. You've heard that name. We hear it when? Christmas, typically, right? Why? Because well, that was God's given name, right? What does it mean? God with us. God with us. Not God with the rich. Not God with the religious. But God with us. All of us. Not just some of us. All of us. The church. The church down the street. The folks that are shopping over at Walmart right now instead of going to church. The tribal folks who don't even know what church is. The Buddhist. The prostitute that's on Broad Street. The gambler who's just going to bed. All of us. All of us. With. That's a great word, isn't it? It really is. It's a relational word. Will you go with me? To the store? to the hospital, through my life. God says he will. I am with you always, even as he was ascending into the heavens. Restrictive conditions on this promise? None. None. You won't find, if you behave, I'll be with you. There's no withholding tax on God's love. His God's with promise. He is with us. God is with us. Christ prayed for you even before you existed. And for that, we count ourselves as a blessed, blessed people. Emmanuel, God with us. We count on Christ to be with us now and forever. Jesus spoke throughout his chapter saying, praying for himself that God may get the glory, praying for his students that were with him so that his friends, his disciples, would be strengthened in a time of absence that was about to come. He prayed for the you and me's in life. And he said it in verse 20, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Jesus was proclaiming and asking God to unify the Christians that would follow his disciples. He asked for protection on our behalf and holiness, knowing that Jesus prayed for us, knowing that he prayed for us thousands of years ago, gives me and it should give you the confidence to boldly go and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in his name. He wanted everyone to work towards a unified and powerful witness to share the good news to a bad world. So, how are we doing? How are we doing? Luke 10, 2 states, He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. I know the session knows this, but it's something I challenged people and I continue to challenge you today with. Luke 10, 2. I ask you right now to take and set your alarms. 10, 02, 
morning or night, 1002, and pray. Pray for this church. Pray for the workers. Pray for the harvest. Pray for each other. I set mine at 1002. It was funny. It was going off in the middle of Sunday school. And it does. And what did I do? I stopped and briefly prayed. Prayed for each person that was in that Sunday school. It was a great time. It was a great time. But understand, and this is the, the, the heartfelt moment that I had about this, that I know that if I'm praying at that time, that I know that other people out there are praying as well, that are praying for me and my family, that are praying for others all at the same time. And what a beautiful and powerful witness that the power of prayer can be enacted when we sit down and yield to God's grace. I hope, I hope that you can set your alarms and pray with me. Set them. 10.02. Why? Why should we do this? Because he thought that you were worthy enough to die for. He thought that each of you were worthy enough to die for. Because, because he thought that you were worthy we feel and we should be worthy of the adorations and confessions and thanksgivings and supplications and intercessions and self-dedication. We should give him our time. Time with him and him only. Because he needs it? No. Because he loves you. Because he loves you. Because he is God with us. And he just wants the same in return. Prayers. All of it for him to him, to thank him, because we love him. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation, if I can ask you.